it's Ben here and here in this video we're going to have a look at how we add overlays in Final Cut Pro 10. Now we're going to have a look at how we add them in Final Cut Pro. We'll talk a little bit about how you need to make these overlays so that they work in Final Cut Pro 10 and then at the end I'm going to have a look at Adobe InDesign which is kind of my software of choice for creating these grids and we'll talk a bit about that. So if you've got InDesign then it's definitely a good piece of software to create your own grids in um, simply because of some of the, the features in that software. Um, but let's dive in and have a quick look at how we set these overlays up in Final Cut Pro 10. Now these can be really useful if you want to keep your design and layout consistent um, through your edits. So positioning of text, positioning of split screens and all that kind of stuff can really be made a lot easier by using an overlay like this. So I will leave links to all the overlays that I am using in this tutorial so you can go ahead and download them. Now to add overlays, we're not really working in the timeline in Final Cut Pro 10, but just before we get started, we're gonna go to Window, Workspaces, and we're gonna set the default workspace. So once we're in this default workspace, it should mean we're all looking at the same thing in Final Cut Pro 10. So we'll just make sure that we're on the timeline here, and if we can't do our viewer here, we can go to our Show Title and Action Safe Overlays, or Zones, and you can see we've got the Title Safe Zone and the Action Safe Zone. So these are some very basic overlays that we can add but we can set up our own overlays in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're going to turn these off and we're going to come to this choose custom overlay option. So when I go to add custom overlay, it's basically going to give me the file browser and I have set up a folder of different kind of PNGs. Uh, actually, all of these don't have something in them. I've got a basic rule of thirds overlay that I can add here. So if we open this up, you can see that basically I've set up a transparent PNG that's the file format that can kind of hold transparency. And then these lines, which I actually set up in Photoshop for, for this particular example. Then if we go to choose custom overlay and we go to add custom overlay again, then you can see here, if we just highlight one of these and I tap the space bar, you can see I set up some different overlays. So this one is split into four columns and three rows with this kind of buffer between our overlays. And I set that up in InDesign. So if we open that up, it's gonna to switch to that overlay. Now, once we've added those overlays in our custom overlays, they'll show up unless you delete them. So you can see in this menu now, it's kind of grown to the list of the two overlays that I've added. And then also this reveal in finder button at the bottom. So if I click this, it's gonna take me into my library, application support, pro apps and custom overlays for Final Cut Pro 10 and I can actually delete those in there. So there's no menu option to delete these, and we just have to delete these here. So if I highlight these and drag them down to the trash, we're not deleting the originals there, and we'll just right click and empty the trash as well. Final Cut Pro is gonna scream at us now and say these custom overlays aren't there, so they're gonna be removed. And so now you can see we're back to that default menu of just being able to add the custom overlay. So you can see here um, with these custom overlays, we can create a variety of different styles of overlay. So four columns and three rows without the buffer in between. A rule of thirds overlay, and then a four column overlay with the three rows there, but we can obviously kind of set up our own custom setups as well. So just as an example of when we would want to use these custom overlays, if we were wanting to create some kind of split screen uh, with a buffer in between each of these, we can then start to modify our video uh, and kind of match it up to different quadrants in this overlay. So if we grab our transform tool, we can drop this size of this video clip down and we're never going to grab the overlay because it's not really there it's just kind of a visual so we'll put this hat in this box and then we're going to come to our cropping tools here up in the inspector or we can choose the crop options down here that will do that and now we can crop to the overlay you can see it's still snapping to the central part of that video but you can see here very quickly the overlay becomes useful to actually get that all lined up perfectly. Now, if you wanna get very precise or you need to be precise in your edit, then we can come into our crop options in the inspector. And if we zoom right in here to say 400%, then we can use the little red box here to move around. And you can see my crop on the right is not quite in the right spot. These are each a couple of pixels wide. And, and then we can grab those edges and refine that crop so we can move around each of these edges and get it perfect. 
Now, one of the really nice features in Final Cut Pro 10, it's not a new one, um, is that we can copy and paste attributes. So if we want to make sure that when we, we'll just go to fit here, uh, when we come to our next clip, that it's in exactly the same spot as this, I'm gonna press done up here. We can copy this. We can come to our next clip and then select it and then go to edit and paste attributes. And you can see here, we've got some options for that. So we're just gonna be pasting the crop and transform options. We don't need to paste the audio attributes. And that will pop that second video in exactly the same spot. So you can see quite quickly, we can use that grid to line things up, but then we can use the copy and paste attributes to kind of get things in exactly the right spot. So if we grab another video here, maybe we wanna have a video running in these two boxes. So I'm gonna grab my transform options. We'll scale this down. We'll bring this across here. So now we can come back to our crop options and we can trim this down. So you can see in here, once we press done, Let's toggle off those overlays just by highlighting it there. You can see now we've got this kind of real nice layout. Everything's lined up perfectly um, within that grid. So how do we make these grids? So for, for me, um, I like to do this in Adobe InDesign simply because it's really easy to uh, do some of this setup. So if we jump into InDesign, and you could do this in other applications, anything that can create lines and export out a transparent PNG, like InDesign, like Photoshop, like Inkscape, if you're looking for something free, and we'll definitely be able to create what we're looking for here. So we'll come to a blank canvas here, and I'm gonna show you a little trick or kind of tip that I really like about InDesign. So I've just copied and pasted these bars that I'm using. So basically these are my, my grids. Now, if I wanted to make a simple, say, row of six columns in here, then I would be dividing this into six. So I've just snapped my shape to the edges here. So this is a 1920 by 1080 pixel document in InDesign. So you can see my box here is 1920 by 1080. So the width here, I wanna make this into perfectly into six columns. So if I come up to 1920, and I'll need to figure out uh, what one sixth of that is. I don't wanna do the math, so I can just do slash and six, and InDesign will do the math for me. And that makes things really easy. So now I can grab my guide, I can move this across, and we can build up a nice grid here. So if you've got a design that you want to transport into a video format, uh, or a grid that you want to transport into a video format, then this is a real nice and neat and kind of quick way of doing it. So we'll just make a six column grid here and we're not gonna have any rows in this one just to kind of demonstrate how we do it. So I've added all the guides in there. So you can see we've kind of split that up into six. And so now I can either grab the line tool and draw a line down here, which is gonna give me a straight line down. I need to increase my stroke to a couple of pixels. It's already set up as that pink or magenta, and then I can move this across. So we'll set up two versions of this and we'll do this quickly. So I've got six lines across there. That's great. So if we come to our pages up here now, I can hold down the option key and just duplicate my page here. We'll get a second one. I'm gonna move it up so they're kind of next to one another. So we've got two of these six column rows and the second one, I'm gonna take this rectangle and I'm gonna make this 40 pixels. Well, let's go for 30 pixels wide, okay? So now I can move this. We'll just zoom in a bit more here. So you can see I'm snapping it to that guide for this uh, particular example. Okay, and I can hold down Option or Alt and just move it across, it'll snap to the next guide. And I can take two now, they're all the same distance apart, so we can quickly do this. 
So now when we're ready to move back, oops, we've missed the bottom there on a couple of these. We need to make sure these run over the edges so that we don't get anything weird going on. Okay, so basically all that's going to show up is those lines. So we'll save that. I'm going to go to File and Export. We're going to save this out as a PNG format so that it can have the transparency and it will overwrite the existing PNG files that are there. So grids for Final Cut Pro 10. We'll save this out and I'm going to replace all of those and I'm going to just export out all of them. It's not really going to matter too much that I overwrite the uh, files that exist already. I'll apply to all. And so now if we go back into Final Cut Pro, then we can come up, we'll come along a little bit. We can come up to our Choose Custom Overlay. We'll select Add Custom Overlay. And you can see in here now, I think we had four and five, we've got our columns here or our columns with a little bit of padding. So we'll choose this one. So now you can see we've got everything split into columns. So if we grab this video, for instance, and we grab the crop tool, we can crop this. <laughs> that is often gonna happen. So sometimes finding the crop is a little bit tricky at, right at the edge here. So we'll actually come up to the crop tool and crop it from the left. Okay, and we'll crop it to there. And actually this is a good opportunity to show you a different crop option that we have. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to hold down the option key. And you can see now that when I drag this, it's moving that number by a very small amount. So actually this works best if we zoom right in. So we'll zoom into 400. And you can see if I'm cropping from the left, when I drag it like this, it moves quite quickly. And sometimes you can miss the line. But if I get it close to that line, and then hold down Alt or Option, it's going to make more refined movements. I can move across the right hand side of that. We'll increase the crop there. Oops. Hold down the Option key so we get that nice and clean. And then let's add another version of this video on top. So if we come back to fitting, um, when I've got a clip selected, this one already has the crop on it. If I want to, I can move the crop to a different location so I get kind of bars of that same video. Or I can come to the crop options up in the inspector and just press this backspace that will remove the crop. So actually what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to increase the scale. We will grab the transform options. I'm going to move this across here. And then I'm going to crop it from the left again. And you can see that crop really does move quite quickly sometimes. So once we get close, we can hold down this. And we're just building that consistency, you know, double the width of this one, including the kind of buffer in between. Um, and design or designing with grids can work really nicely uh, when you you know, do something like this. So that's a little bit of how to use the custom overlays in Final Cut Pro 10. Obviously we can create our custom overlays anywhere, whether it's in InDesign or Photoshop or another application where we can export out a transparent PNG. I'm sure there's lots of different methods of doing that. And this is just my method of choice, particularly because of that uh, math option. So being able to create something that's the full width and height of your screen, so in this case 1920 by 1080, and then creating those custom grids um, so that they kind of line up perfectly. And then also the, the zoom options up here, the view options, being able to move around, and those tips for cropping will be really useful, not just in this scenario, but with other things as well, whether it's changing uh, type or whatever in Final Cut Pro 10, it's going to be super useful. This custom overlay won't export. We can just flip between it as we want, um, so we can choose you know, whichever one we want, and then we can work with and kind of play with that. So obviously we can do things like popping type into these windows as well. Uh, and that gives us some nice kind of fun opportunities to play around with things too. So if you have any questions about 
custom overlays in Final Cut Pro 10 or Final Cut Pro in general or InDesign, Photoshop, those other applications, then do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.